Welcome, welcome to Faith Angels Church. 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 We're starting, starting just a few minutes, minutes late today. today. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. We've, We've taken, taken a breath. breath. We've, uh, we're ready, we're ready to, go. to go. And we're, and we're ready, ready to worship the Lord. Lord. On this, on this fifth, fifth Sunday, Sunday in the season, season of Lent, of Lent we, we prepare, prepare our hearts for the glorious, for the glorious resurrection, resurrection celebration on Easter, on Easter Sunday. Sunday. As we As begin, begin to worship, we will sing, I give you my heart.
don't know about, I don't about you, but I, I, I want to walk, walk as a child, child of my life. life. How about, How about you? you? You want to you walk, walk as a child, child of my life? life? Let's, Let's stand, stand together, together and, and sing. sing.
Amen. Bless the, Bless the Lord, Lord who forgives, who forgives all, all our sins. Our sins. Together, Together let's, let's pray. pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you, to you all our hearts are open, open. All, all desires, desires are known, and from, and from you no secrets, secrets are hid. Cleanse all thoughts of our hearts by the by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, that we may make perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our, Hear what our Lord, Lord Jesus, Christ Jesus Christ says. You shall, you love, shall love the Lord your God, God with all your, with your heart, heart and with all and your, with your soul, soul and with and all, all your, mind. your mind. This is the this first, is the first and great, great commandment. commandment. And the second, second is like, like it, you shall love, love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. On, these On these two commandments depend all the law, law and, the, and the prophets. The Lord be with you. With you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you alone, alone can bring, can bring into, order into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Of sinners. Grant, your, Grant your, people your people grace, grace to love, love what you command and, and desire what you, what you promise. promise. That, that among, among the swift, the swift and very very changes of this, of this world, world, our hearts, our hearts may surely there be, there be fixed where true, true joys, joys are, are to be found through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, who lives, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Spirit. One God, One God, now, now and, forever. and forever. Amen. Amen. Maybe be seated, seated for the reasons. For the reasons. A, reading A reading from the book, from the book of, of Ezekiel, 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 chapter, chapter 37, 14. The hand, the hand of, the of the Lord was upon me, upon me and, he and he brought me out, me out in the Spirit of the Lord. Of the Lord. And set, and set me down, me down the middle, the middle of the valley. It was, it was full of bones. And he and led me around, around among them. And behold, and behold there, were there were very many surfaces of the valley. valley. And behold, and behold they, were they were very dry. And he, and said, he said to me, Son of Son man, man can, these can these bones live? live? And, I, and I answered, <coughs> O Lord, Lord God, you know. You know. Then he then said, he said to, me, to me, Prophesy over these bones and say, say to them, all dry, All dry bones, bones hear the word, word of the Lord. Thus, Thus says, says the Lord God, God to these bones. bones. Behold, Behold, I will, I will cause breath, breath to enter you, and you and shall, shall live. And I will, and lay, I will lay sinews, sinews upon, upon, you, upon you, and will and cause, cause flesh, flesh to come upon, upon you, and cover, and cover you with skin. skin. And put, and put breath in you, and you and shall live. And you shall, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as, and as I prophesied, there was, there was a, sound. a sound, and behold, and behold a rat rattling. And the bones, and the bones came, came together, together bone, bone to its bone, bone. And, I and I looked, and behold, and behold there were sinews, sinews on, on them, and the flesh, the flesh had come upon them, and skin, skin had covered, covered them, but there, but there was, was no breath in them. Then he, then said, he said, said to me, prophesy, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, prophesy to the man, and say, say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come, come from before the four winds of breath and breathe, and breathe on this land that they may live. live. So I, so prophesied, I prophesied as he commanded me. And the and breath, breath came, came into them, them and, they and they lived and stood, stood on their, on their feet, 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 an exceeding great, great army. Then he then said, he said to, to me, son, son of man, this, this bone of the whole house, house of Israel is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalms 130, alternately by whole verse. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas. 
If you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who could stand? I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord. The Lord watch me for the morning. The Lord watch me for the morning. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? <coughs> they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? And Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha said, uh, Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you again and again and again for the gift of your holy word. We pray that you would open our ears and help us to hear and help us to be doers of your word as well. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Now, when I was a child, I remember learning that old Negro spiritual dry bones. Any of y'all remember that one? Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Don't you hear the word of the Lord? 
toe bone connected to the foot bone, the foot bone connected to the leg bone, the leg bone connected to the knee bone. Don't you hear the word of the Lord? Leg bone connected to the knee bone, knee bone connected to the thigh bone, thigh bone connected to the hip bone. Don't you hear the word of the Lord? Now, what in the world is that song talking about? Is this sort of the first semester of med school? You know? Is that what doctors learn? Dr. Bob, is that did, what, did you learn that song in med school? No, I don't think so. So maybe it's sort of a, a, a elementary school song of teaching about physiology. But I don't think so. The truth is, dry bones is about today's reading from Ezekiel 37. Without God's breath, without God's spirit, you have no life in you. You are dry bones. God's breath brings life, physical life, and spiritual life. Genesis chapter 2 says, Then the Lord formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. God's breath is literally the breath of life. And God's breath is his Holy Spirit. So God's breath brings life. If God should remove his breath from you, you would cease to exist. Poof. We are all dependent about, upon God's Holy Spirit for our life in this world. Not only are you dependent upon the Holy Spirit for your physical life in this world, you are dependent upon the Holy Spirit for your spiritual life in this world. In John chapter 3, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of, of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. To become a Christian, to become a child of God, you must be born of the Holy Spirit. To have a living relationship with God, the God's Spirit must live in your heart. Amen? Blaise Pascal once said, inside of every man is a God-shaped void. That void can only be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, people try to fill it with all sorts of things, don't they? We've tried to fill it with all sorts of things, haven't we? But that void can only be filled with the Spirit of God. It's like we learned in, in kindergarten, or maybe even earlier, preschool, that the round pegs go into the round holes, right? And, and you pound them in, or the triangular pegs go into the triangular holes. And, and, and we can try to fill that God-shaped void in our heart with all sorts of things, but it doesn't fit. Only when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us is that void filled. So to have spiritual life, you must invite God into your life. Invite the Holy Spirit to come dwell within you. Now, Ezekiel chapter 37 was written to give God's people hope after a very dark period of their rebellion and their sin against God. God's people had repeatedly sinned against him. They were sexually immoral, adultery, prostitution, temple prostitution. They repeatedly broke God's Sabbath. They sacrificed their children to the false god Moloch in fire. They intertwined the worship of God with the worship of the false gods. In fact, even the, the priests of the temple in Jerusalem those who were designated to lead God's people into worship, worship false gods. Ra, the sun god of Egypt. Baal and Asherah, the Canaanite fertility gods. So the people were alive physically, but they were dead and dying spiritually. They were dry bones. They had no life in them. They were dead men walking. God had called his people to repent and to return to him over and over and over again. A few listened, but unfortunately, the vast majority refused to listen. In the year 605 B.C., by the will of God, Nebuchadnezzar became king of the Babylonian Empire. Seven years later, in December of 
598 BC, Nebuchadnezzar marched on Israel. And he raised to the ground city after city after city on the way to Jerusalem. When he came to Jerusalem, he destroyed the city. 10,000 Jews were exiled to Babylon, including the prophet Ezekiel. For the next 12 years, the Babylonians repeatedly plundered Jerusalem. They exiled their people more and more. And finally, in the year 586, the city walls were destroyed. The temple was destroyed. All the glory of the nation of Israel was gone. The people were living in denial. They had for decades. They simply would not, not admit their sins, and they would not ask God for forgiveness for their sins. They would not turn from their wickedness. They would not turn to God. And the whole nation of Israel was a valley of dry bones, for they were spiritually dead. And the first 24 chapters of the book of Ezekiel is God's message of judgment against his own people, the nation of Israel for their refusal to repent and their refusal to turn to the Lord. Now those who did turn to the Lord, those who did repent, were a minority. And they were lost in despair. How, how could this happen? The glory of the nation of Israel was ruined. The glorious city of Jerusalem had been burned. The walls were breached. The temple, the magnificent golden temple that people came all over the world to see. The gold had been stripped. The temple had been destroyed. Block by block, they had been taken down and thrown into the valleys. Then their leader, King Zedekiah, had been brutally defeated. The last thing he saw was his sons being executed in front of him. And then they gouged his eyes out and brought him to, in, to, from Jerusalem to Babylon in shackles and shame. In the depth of their despair, through the prophet Ezekiel, God gave them a message of hope. I mean, it looked like nothing could ever come about that was good. It felt like death, like a valley of dry bones, and God came and brought them a message of hope. Have you ever been... In the depths of despair. Have you ever been to a, a low place where you just thought there could nothing could ever could could come of this? Where you just felt so low? Have you ever been to a place where you needed a message of hope, a message of encouragement? My guess is all of us, if not most of us, have been there. In a reading from Ezekiel chapter 37, God gave Ezekiel what at first seemed like a nightmarish vision. But the vision, as the vision unfolded, it became a vision of hope. At first, God showed Ezekiel a huge valley of dry human bones, a mass grave. Thousands upon thousands were dead. What a horrible, horrible sight. For me, Ezekiel's vision conjures up images of the death camps of Nazi Germany of the great purge of Soviet Russia, of the killing fields of Pol Pot in Cambodia. This valley of dry bones must have horrified Ezekiel when he saw it, especially when he realized that this valley of dry bones was his, his people, his nation, the nation of Israel. So God asked Ezekiel, in the depths of his despair, in this foreign land, with nothing good that he can see, can, son of man, can these bones live? In other words, Ezekiel, can the nation of Israel ever come to life again? And Ezekiel, he was there in exile, in shame, and probably in sackcloth and ashes half the time. He was speechless. He didn't know. He didn't know if, if anything could ever be restored. So then God told Ezekiel, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, Hear, O bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, 
and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In other words, the exiles of Israel would return. The temple would be rebuilt and and true worship would resume. God's spirit would enter into his people, giving them new life, spiritual life, giving them strength that they needed to love and serve the Lord. In Ezekiel's vision, he prophesied the breath of God entered God's people and he heard a rattling sound. Can you you hear it? Can you hear it? He heard a rattling sound. The bones were coming together. He saw sinews and flesh and finally he saw skin appear and what had been a horrible mass grave of bones was becoming a multitude of lifeless corpses laying there. And then God's breath, his spirit entered into them and their eyes snapped open and they stood up and they began to march. They were a vast army of spirit filled believers. Glory. Isn't that awesome? Woo. Man. Ezekiel's graphic vision was not about dead bodies coming to life. It was, his vision was about spiritually dead people becoming dependent upon the living God, becoming truly alive in God's spirit. Doesn't that sound great? Doesn't that sound better than a valley of dry bones? <laughs> now the same has, was, has been true in my experience in God's church. 1976, God clearly called me to the ordained ministry, but I didn't at that time know exactly what route to take for that. Uh, But in 1984, it became clear to me that God's plan was for me to become an ordained Episcopal priest. I heard the rattling of bones. Can you hear it? Oh. Oh, yeah, can you hear it? I heard the rattling of dry bones. I had concerns about the spiritual state of the Episcopal Church. But out of obedience to my Lord, I pursued the priesthood and ordination in the Episcopal Church. In fact, 30 years this June, I was ordained. My parents sincerely saw me as a missionary going into the Episcopal Church. I had no idea how right they would be. I saw the Valley of Dry Bones growing and growing. And like Ezekiel, I was to the point of despair. How could our bishops not believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus? I I couldn't get it. And I heard those bones rattling. Like Ezekiel, I realized that God had placed me in a dead and dying denomination on purpose. Gee, thanks, God. You know, the upwardly mobile priest? No. I went into a dead and dying denomination. God said, Son of man, can these bones live? And I honestly said to God, I do not know. Then God brought a message of hope through Archbishop Emmanuel Colini. Send missionaries. Send missionaries into America. Start a great mission movement called the Anglican Mission in the Americas. And step by step, stage by stage, God started bringing his church to life. Bones, sinew, skin, and breath. And God has been breathing his Holy Spirit into these dry bones. God is raising up a vast army of spirit-filled believers through the Anglican Church in North America. Ezekiel's vision was about the nation of Israel, but it's also about us. Now, the Valley of Dry Bones from our reading in Ezekiel chapter 37 and the raising of Lazarus from John chapter 11 also foreshadow a future event of your bodily resurrection. As Christians, we believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. We believe 
that unlike any other human throughout life, throughout history, that his bones are not left in the tomb. That he's bodily resurrected from the dead. He's the first fruit of a great army of resurrected people. We believe that on the last day, when Jesus comes again, he will breathe his spirit into our remains, wherever they may be, all over the planet. And he will give us those natural yet supernatural resurrected bodies. Bodies like Jesus' resurrected body. Able to eat, and touch. You know, there's going to be a great feast in heaven, you know. I'm so glad I'm going to be able to eat. Aren't you? <laughs> it's going to be great. All the cholesterol will be gone. <laughs> you know, it'll be great. Huh? Calories. Calories, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. And yet, like Jesus' body, he could appear and disappear. You know, I don't know what that means, but I'm sort of hoping I can go out to Jupiter every now and then, you know? <laughs> or maybe another galaxy. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's going to be awesome. And that's part of this uh, Ezekiel reading and John reading uh, foreshadowed that as well. As the Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. So one day when Jesus returns, he will breathe his breath of life into your remains, and you'll have that resurrected body forever. But right now, right now, Jesus is present. Did you know that? He promised when two or three gathered together in my name that he would be with us. He is present this morning. And he is present to breathe his life into the dry bones of your life. He is present with a message of hope in your time of despair. He is present with the rivers of the waters of life, as Jesus told the woman at the well we heard about recently. Indeed, the water I give will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Do you see dry bones in your past or your present? Do you see the ruins of your life laying around you? Well, don't despair. Ezekiel's message is a message of hope, not discouragement. God has not given up on you. He loves you. He is present to rebuild the ruins of your life. He is present to breathe his breath of life into you so that you can stand up alive in his spirit to love and serve the Lord. It's a message of hope. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, standing. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all the
All who are able, kneel for the prayers. For the peace in the world, whole world, for the welfare of God's holy church, and for the unity of all people in you. Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Foley, our archbishop, and Frank, our assisting bishop, that with a good heart and conscience, they may accomplish their ministry. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> For all who endeavor to win others to follow Christ, in all places of education and learning, that the whole world may be filled with the knowledge of your truth. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> for all nations and peoples and all who are set in authority over others especially Joe, our president Lord, hear our prayer for the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful and the dying especially Manziel Bill, John, Janie Beth, Eli, Lynn, Bill, and Eliza. For Julie, Norma, and Kevin. Lord, hear our prayers. For the poor and the hungry. For the persecuted and refugees, orphans, and for all in need. Lord, for ourselves and all followers of Jesus Christ, that we may love one another as he has loved us. Lord, hear our prayer. That with all your servants who have served you here and are now at rest, we may enter into the fullness of your eternal joy. Lord, hear our prayer. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the people and clergy of Faith Anglican Church, Cordova, Tennessee, asking you, Lord, to bless and strengthen their ministry and fellowship to be good witnesses for Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, let's read together, please. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your Savior. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Next slide. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God, kneeling to thee.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The saying is tr trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. It's good news. Let's stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Envelopes are out in the back um, on that table by the door straight ahead. Flowers are going to be twenty dollars a pot. They'll be we'll have hydrangeas, uh, I think white and blue and pink. We're going to have pink azaleas, some ferns. Um, but if you would like to donate uh, 
money toward them. They're twenty dollars, and you can take them home. Not next, not on Easter Sunday, but the following Sunday. We want to. They're going to be so beautiful. We want to enjoy them for two Sundays, if that's okay. And let's see, you can do them in memory or honor or whatever. But these envelopes are in the back. One more announcement. We really need some new people on the altar guild. Um, starting in June, I think we're going to be down to three of us. So. Altar or flower? Flower. I'm sorry. Yeah, good. Thank it's you. Good. Good. <laughs> altar guild might need somebody too. <laughs> I'm, talk I'm talking about flower guild. So if you love flowers, if you like to arrange flowers, if you want to learn how to arrange flowers, please let me know. Um, we do need some more people, and if you want to join, we'll help you uh, be a part of us. I just say that my wife Mary uh, got on the flower guild because Vibe said, hey, would you like to learn how to arrange flowers? And she said, okay. Yep. And uh, she did. It's like, oh, this is much easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So anyway, so let me know if you want to be on the flower guild, and don't forget to donate to some flowers. Great. So you get uh, both of the scotch this morning. Uh, I'm just going to make a little announcement about the uh, search committee. Um, first, June 4th will be Father Han's last Sunday. So that's official now. Uh, there's some rumors going around about the role of the search committee and the role of the bishop. Let me just very quickly say that it's the role of the search committee to discern the right rector for this church through prayer and um, interviews and that sort of thing. It's the role of the bishop to make sure that the, the person is um, biblically uh, centered like Herb was talking about before, and he has to license the priest. So he, he can't force, the rumor is that the bishop will just force somebody on us. That's an Episcopal tradition that didn't carry Not over. Huh? That wasn't what I said. Oh, you're confessing? <laughs> I didn't get it from you, but, you know. Uh, and I ask you to pray for this process. Thank you. All right. Now, do we have a video today about life choices? Do you, do you want to introduce it? Or? Okay. Hi, my name is... <laughs> This video, I think, will be very meaningful for everybody. This is the founders that will be speaking to us and um, the, how the life choices actually got started. And I thank y'all for all you've been doing. And the bottles are coming in so beautifully. Thank you. Everybody, daughter, thank you. Juanette Jones, and I was married for 31 years to Buck Jones was my biggest cheerleader and I would like to think I was his and uh, life choices was something that God really put on both of our hearts at the same time. Hello I am Don Johnson. It's my honor and privilege to have been one of those involved in the creation of the life choices ministry. Don and Ann Johnson and Doc and I were in Washington DC in the National Religious Broadcasters it seemed like everybody that spoke at the time, like you have to remember this was 30 years ago, abortion was not really talked about much, especially in churches. We heard President Reagan in a special presentation he gave to the NRB. And also we got the privilege of hearing a message by Dr. Jerry Falwell. At that time in 1984, there were 1,000,000 333,521 abortions and he was dealing with the issue when we got on board the plane to return from Washington to Memphis Buck and I said to each other why doesn't God do something God answered us with another question why don't you do something so we just started meeting in our home and praying and it was something that was so real to all of us that we couldn't let it go. And out of that, God led us, following the months and months of gathering together in prayer, to set up the ministry, Life Choices. And God
God took that early beginning and began to do great and mighty things. We had our first little building, some one office space given to us. A friend of mine and I, we were in this office, we just had the phone installed, and it rang. And we were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> who is it and how did they get this number? And it was a it was just God's stamp of approval to say, you know what, this is a ministry that is needed and regardless of you, I'm gonna do it. And that, that's kind of how it started. We've had times when in the bank we had $17, but we knew that God was gonna provide for our needs and he did. The first year really that we were meeting and planning um, we decided we needed a fundraising banquet. Central Church, which was way out on Winchester at the time, gave us the space to have it, and 300 people showed up. We were like blown away. And uh, we invited ministers from this surrounding area. We presented what we were doing, we presented the need that was growing in our city, and we said, here are ways that we want to solve the problem and address the matter. Dr. Adrian Rogers, who was outstanding in every way. He was not only a leader in his church, he was a leader in this entire Mid-South area. And he spoke up and said, after what I've heard today, I am faced with a choice. I either have to go back to Bellevue Baptist Church and create a life choices at Bellevue Baptist, or I have to get behind this ministry and help encourage it and support it. Having some churches that we knew were supporting us and that we could help them and they could help us, Dr. Rogers was, was huge in getting that started. There was a time when I was serving as the chairman of the board of directors. And I told our directors that people in this area were betting on life choices. Their bet was which would come first, the building of Life Choices Center or the return of Jesus Christ. And so I challenged the board that now was the time to move in that direction. The big, huge thing was when we were given the land of Covington Pike that wonderful facility has been built, which has become a medical facility, and ultrasounds and things that we, we didn't even know to ask or think, you know, God knew. When we began, I had no dream life choices would ever rise to the statue that now it occupies. We wanted us to do what God called us to do where he called us to do it. And now, it is amazing with our medical unit and the ultrasounds we give and uh, the increased number of girls who come. And Life Choices is a light in the darkness that's helping those young babies and mothers, fathers and families and parents and grandparents. It's a far-reaching effect. I think if you could see a baby being placed in an adopted home, or if you could see a young girl who gets saved and, and can provide a Christian home for a child, I just don't think there's any better way to spend your money than to invest it in human lives that are gonna not only be here physically, but eternally.
So Life Choices is developing administrative fathers as well, which is uh, which is great. It's, they are part of the part of the salute part of the solution, right? They're part of the the equation. Well, um, I, I know we're uh, it's time for the Lord's Supper. So praise the Lord. If you're a baptized Christian, you're welcome to come uh, to receive uh, Christ's body and blood today. Let's ascribe to the Lord the honor to His name, the offerings, and come into His courts. Be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy, gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death that we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament to be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
ready? Ready. Ready to go out into the world? To not be dry bones, but to be spirit-filled believers to share the love and truth of Christ around the world? Yes. Okay, so you've been fed with word and sacrament. You are ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Can you do this in your own strength? No. Okay, so we need God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.